Today, I'm going to talk to you about the Valley of Despair, otherwise known as the dip, and why it's the most important part of your journey as an entrepreneur. Welcome back to another episode of Hashtag Winning. Uriel King, here, CEO and founder of Healthpreneur. We help health professionals and coaches build world-class coaching businesses that transform more lives. But that only happens if you're able to get through the never-ending valleys of despair and dips you will face in your business. So Seth Godin has a book called The Dip. Um, I've also created videos on this topic about the the journey, we, the emotional journey we all go through as entrepreneurs. So you can probably find this online, but really I'll just kind of walk you through this. When you start something new, and it doesn't matter what it is, a business, a new skill, anything, you start off at the first stage, which is this, this whole like, oh my God, rainbow, right? Honeymoon phase. It's called uninformed optimism. And so you're super pumped. You're excited because you've seen the possibilities and you've seen the promised land and it's just exciting. And then quickly, or maybe a little bit more delayed, you get into the second phase, which is known as informed, sorry, um, informed pessimism. And so this is the point where you start to recognize like, shit, this is actually pretty hard. And this is the reality check of everything. And this is also why in business, I do think it's really important to be very transparent and honest with your prospective clients about how challenging change is going to be. I mean, I think we do a pretty good job at letting our audience know that although we have a system to make your life easier and simpler to get clients to grow your business, it's not easy. I mean, it's a business. You're going to run into challenges, right? You have to test new things. You have to make adjustments. You're going to have many moments where you want to throw in the towel. And that's not immune to anyone. Like no one is immune to that. So the informed pessimism can be very dramatic if you are selling people a dream without a reality check, okay? So that's why in the marketing and sales conversations you have, you want to be very honest and transparent with your prospects so you minimize the informed pessimism. Basically saying, listen, um, like just raise your hand, like swear, you know, whatever. I understand that what I'm about to embark on is going to be challenging. I understand that change is hard. But what else is also hard is staying unhealthy, overweight, out of shape, sick, broke, etc. This one's hard. This one's hard. Choose your hard, right? And so you're getting them to agree to the difficulty of the journey, regardless of the fact that you have a faster, simpler, easier roadmap, okay? They have to understand that it's not just going to be a magic pill and overnight results. If they want that, they can go to Ozempic and deal with all that nonsense. So the informed pessimism, I think, can be mitigated, but nonetheless, everyone's going to experience it. But that goes down into this third stage called the valley of despair, or as Seth Godin calls it, the dip. And this is what separates entrepreneurs who succeed from the 97 or 95% that ultimately fail in business, is the valley of despair is that moment where you have this like come to Jesus moment where you're like, what am I doing? Is this going to work? I think I'm just going to give it like call it a day, throw in the towel. And this is unfortunate because this is the reason why, no matter as hard as we try, this is the human condition, okay? No matter how hard we try, there will always be disparity. Always, no matter what. Because the vast majority of humans are not willing to go through the suffering or the struggle to achieve the success on the other side of it. And so what happens is in the valley of despair, you start questioning everything. And during that time, you start becoming more receptive to other shiny objects. Another way to look at this is think about a relationship. In a relationship, you start dating someone and the honeymoon phase, everything's great, right? Uninformed optimism. Then after a couple of weeks, you start noticing little things like, oh, sh- this person actually farts or maybe they don't have good table manners or whatever it is that like, you know, pushes your buttons. Informed pessimism. Okay, so it's not... They have some flaws, just like I do, right? And then we get into, eventually, perhaps, the valley of despair, where maybe this happens to my wife and I. You have this uh, this moment, maybe when you've got kids, where things start to change dramatically, and now all of a sudden, it's like your whole world is flipped, side down, flipped upside down. And now, in that moment, unless the relationship is very, very strong, you start considering alternatives, well, maybe I need someone else to give me attention. Maybe I need this from somewhere else outside of myself. And this in a relationship becomes very dangerous as it is in business. Because the thing is, the answers are not out there. The answers are in here. And until you get that, you will always 
be unhappy with the journey, whether it's in relationships or in business. So this is where, um, you know, in a relationship, people start cheating on each other because they think it's easier, better outside the relationship, only to realize that that person's also a psycho or whatever the situation is. And here's the thing in business is that you get in business, you get in the value of despair, and you're like, shit, I don't know if I can do this anymore. This isn't working. You start pointing fingers and blaming, and therefore you feel justified looking for another option. But here's what happens. Instead of taking ownership of like, how do I learn? How do I grow? How do I get better here? Is you start being not you, but just in general, we start being tempted by other opportunities. And those other opportunities look really exciting. And the reason they look exciting is because we don't have all the information. They all look like the new honeymoon phase. Oh my God, that looks so much easier. Fuck this thing. I'm going to do that. And what you do is you go from the valley of despair and you go right back to ground zero and you start the new thing. And guess what happens again? Everything's amazing. Uninformed optimism. And then, oh, this is also hard. And then you get into the valley of despair once again. You're like, oh my God, yet again, something else that doesn't work. Here's the thing I want you to remember about this is that it's not that the thing doesn't work. It's that we, you and I, every individual doesn't work. That's the big issue, okay? And I'm going to tell you straight up as it is. Like if someone comes and talks with me about possibly working together and they're like, I did all these other things and they didn't work, I'm like, please don't come into my world because what that tells me is you don't work. You don't understand how to move through the valley of despair. And you might think you do, but the very fact that you failed, quote unquote, in numerous other plans or coaching programs or other strategies is a big warning sign. Success leaves clues, so does failure. Like, it's not that, like, it doesn't matter what you do, all of it can work. I mean, if it didn't work, how can there possibly be positive testimonials and case studies from everything out there? And then we all have the skepticism, like, oh my God, are they true? Are they real? What's the real deal? And then here's the real deal. It doesn't matter what you do. Some people will win. Most people will do okay. And some people will do nothing. So in our, in our, we actually just compiled some stats. And I'll just share this with you. So in the last 12 months, the bottom 20% of our clients, do you know how much money they've made? They've made $0. And I'm going to just be very honest to tell you that because why did they earn $0? Because they didn't do anything. I don't even know who they are. So they don't show up, they don't lean into coaching, they don't follow the process. Obviously, it's not going to work. Or they start off and then they run into a bump. Oh, shit, my first ad didn't work out too well. I had a call and the person said, no, I'm not doing this. And then what they'll do is they'll point fingers at me and they'll say, Yuri will tell you it's on you. And he doesn't take ownership of his own stuff. I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting because you know we're only obsessed about making our program as effective as possible for our clients. But again, what's going to happen is these people leave the program, they go on to do something else, and guess what happens? The same thing. Until they finally take ownership of how they show up. Right? We had a client recently leave, and he's like, you know, the results have been like, man, not what I'm looking for. And he, he wrote, he tested two different ads in a year. I'm like, dude, that's, that's kindergarten, man. Like, what do you expect? You're going to go somewhere else, and you're going to run one ad, and it's going to like win the lottery for you? It's delusional, Right? So the bottom 20% of our clients make $0. And I encourage you to look at most other coaching programs and ask them, what do the bottom 20% of your clients make? And I promise you, it'll be zero because those people don't do anything, right? It's a bell curve, just like in school. The bottom 10 to 20% fail or they get really bad grades. The average revenue generated over the past 12 months for our clients, $67,000 per year, okay? Average profits, added into their businesses, $43,000 per year. These are all US dollars. Okay, so those are the averages. Now, top 20% of our clients, they made $368,000 over the 12-month period. Okay, so top 20% make a 368000 bottom 20% zero. How's that even possible? This must be a scam. Blah, blah, blah. No, it works for a bunch and it doesn't work for people who don't show up. And then the top 10%, uh, made $586,107 on average for the year. So like, it's not, that the, it's not that the thing doesn't work. Like, it's not that a car doesn't move. It's that you don't know how to drive it, right? It's like, as you know, uh, I think Tom Cruise or whoever said this in the movie Maverick, it's not about the plane. It's about the guy or the man or the pilot in the box. 
And again, I continue to come back to this. And I'm not saying my client's results or lack thereof is on me or it's not on me because yeah, like I'm, I'm really not happy about the fact that the bottom 20% of our clients don't see any money. And I still think working with us is the best investment they ever make because sometimes the most important lesson you have to learn is an expensive one. And that expensive one might be like, fuck, maybe I actually need to show up a little bit differently. And it's not to say that like I take a tremendous amount of ownership of things that we can do better. And that's, that's just me. But again, like both parties have to do their thing. So you could look at any coaching program and the same with you and your clients. Not all of your clients win. If you're helping people lose weight and no one, uh, the person doesn't work out, does that mean your process is a scam? No, it means that person is fundamentally not who they need to be yet because they're not taking the right action or any action and therefore they're not getting results. Be, do, have. If you don't have what you want, it's because you're not the person you need to be yet. And that person starts with you, me, taking 100% ownership of how we show up. Period. End of story. And you can argue with me all you want about this or argue with anyone else you want about this. But I promise you, the more you argue about this and you start to argue for your shortcomings, the more you will suffer and struggle in life. And I don't want that for you. This is hashtag winning, not hashtag losing. So the valley of despair is the most beautiful opportunity for you to separate yourself from everyone else. Because most people are not going to want to go through the challenge of growth, even though they say they're a growth-oriented person. And it's like, no, you're not. You're full of shit. You want the easy path. And when things get hard, you curl up and die. Just like 95% of the people out there who do nothing with their life. If growing a great business was easy, everyone would do it. But that's not the case, which is why the percentage of the vast majority of business owners go out of business in five years because they don't have the stamina. They don't have the wherewithal to keep going through the dips and keep going through the dip. To get to it, you have to go through it. You don't start again every single time. Like I know people who've been in the same relationship three, four times with different people because they have, they keep getting into the dip and they're like, ah, fuck this. I'm going to start another relationship with someone else. And they keep repeating the same pattern over and over and over again because they're not going through the hard, hard conversations, looking in the mirror, being very realistic about their shortcomings and improving all that stuff, right? And that's, that's all this is. So the third phase, this valley of despair is really what separates success from failure, and, and I really look at it as failure because you only lose and fail when you quit. That's it. So by saying, I quit, I'm doing something else, you failed. You haven't learned the lesson. You're either earning or you're learning. So if we move through the valley of despair, if we move through the dip, we have the wherewithal to muster up the courage, right? Look at, you know, the Rocky movies. He gets beaten down, you know, bloody face, can't even open his eyes. And he finds a way to come back up like he was in the valley of despair, And he found a way to muster the courage, hang on the rope, pull himself back up. And he moves to the stage four, which is informed optimism, which is, okay, I understand what this is all about. And I think I can make it through this. And then you get to stage five, which is success or achievement. But here's the thing. This is not a one and done cycle. This happens forever, forever. If you look at the macro, what's going to happen is you'll see, if we look at your business journey, revenue, whatever, It'll go up, right, over time, assuming you're doing things properly. But if you zoom into the micro, very much like if you're looking at a stock or the um, the index of the stock market over a hundred years, like you'll see it go up. But if you zoom into the micro on a day to day or week to week basis, you're going to see a lot of volatility, and that's what happens because the stock market is a reflection of human psychology. People freaking out and selling, people you know buying nonstop. And it's the same thing in business. Business is a reflection. The business journey is a reflection of human emotion, right? Informed, uninformed optimism is is an emotion. Informed pessimism is an emotion. Despair is an emotion. And all of this up and down roller coaster shit is simply human emotion. And if you understand that you're not supposed to feel happy and like on top of the world all the time, the sooner you will achieve the success that you want. In fact, I just saw a video from Novak Djokovic this morning. And he was talking about mental strength, right? It's one of the things that has allowed him to become the greatest tennis player of all time. 
And he talked about the difference when he was younger. When he was younger, he used to get really upset because he didn't think it was normal or okay for him to feel negative emotions like anxiety, doubt, etc. And so that used to stress him out even further. And then as he matured, he started to recognize that it's totally okay in a moment in a game or in life in general to have those moments of negativity, of doubt, of despair, etc. But it's how quickly you bounce back to a state of resourcefulness that makes all the difference. See, what happens, like if we look at someone like Novak Djokovic, let's say he gets into the valley of despair in a match, like he's two sets down, it doesn't look good. He, yeah, he is, he, he's trained himself and he's had enough reference points to bounce out of that dip as fast as possible so he can become resourceful again. And now we can move into a state of informed optimism and find a way to win. Versus a lot of people would be two sets down or the world, like whatever the issue is, they don't have the skill yet to bounce back quickly. And so they take this quote unquote easy route or the safe route and they quit and they just give up and they're like, yeah, this is hard. I'm going to go back and do something else. And that's the difference between the greatest of all times and everyone else. And I encourage you to think about this for yourself because you have the opportunity every single day to move through challenges, to move through moments where it feels like, what the fuck is happening in my business? I have no idea what's going on. And you have two choices at all times. You can live in that despair. You can live in that doubt. You can live in that negativity. Or you can say, fuck it. Um, I'm going to find a way to be resourceful, positive, because I know that other people have figured this out. Therefore, they simply know something I don't. Let me talk to them. Let me get some coaching. Let me get feedback or something so I can learn and fill in the gaps of what I don't know. But the, the only thing that I refuse to do is give up. And that's it. And honestly, that's the only reason. Like, I'm not special. I'm not a special snowflake by any means. The only reason I'm here 20 years later after starting my first business is because I'm still here 20 years after I started my first business. That's it. Like, I, I, I want you to know that on a daily basis, I still deal with this stuff, right? The, like, the, 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 the problems just change. The valley of despair always just changes. So initially, it might be something like this. And then over time, it might be something very different. And what's interesting about this is when you look back a year or two later on that initial, you know, dip or valley of despair, you're like, oh my God, that, that I was worrying about that. And it shows you you're growing. But if you're continually dealing with the same valley of despair, the same dip, you're not learning. There's something you're still not growing into. And you'll continue to repeat the same pattern or the same, uh, you'll, you'll continue to learn the same lessons or be shown the same issues until you learn the lesson that situation is meant to teach you. And that's really important to remember. It's not to say like, why am I, why is this happening to me? It's okay, this is happening for me. What do I need to learn? What do I not know yet? And again, this comes back to a sense of ownership. It's not, oh, they did this to me, the economy, the government, taxes. No, shut the fuck up with that stuff. It's like, just look in the mirror. What am I not learning? What skill do I not have yet? And if you work on that, you can solve everything else out. Because you're not supposed to know everything. If you did, like your business would be crushing, right? The, the, the journey of business is simply continually moving through unknowns, unknown territory and getting better. That's, it's okay to not know. It's okay to go through moments of overwhelm. It's okay to not know what the hell you're going to do. And it's okay to feel like you want to live under a blanket for a day or two. But it's how quickly you bounce back from that and keep moving forward that's going to make all the difference and recognize like, this is why I also love reading biographies and listening to stories of very successful businesses. Look at like Howard Schultz, the CEO of Starbucks or the former CEO of Starbucks. Just listen to the interviews that he's done, read his books and just understand the journey that Starbucks went through. you like, no one knew what Starbucks was for the first 15 years of its existence almost. Maybe locally in like, you know, the Pacific Northwest, but, you know, when he had the opportunity to buy Starbucks from the initial founder for $3.2 million, he didn't have the money. He had no money. And the founder gave him 90 days to come up with the money. He approached 244 different investors, different companies, and 217 of them said no. But he kept going. He kept going. If he had given up, Starbucks would not be what it is today. And I would not be enjoying my nitro cold brews. And so when you, you pay attention to the, like, you're not like, you're not special. I'm not special. Our journey is not special, right? It's the same as everyone else's who's built something substantial. So learn from them, read them, be inspired by them 
and understand that if they can do it, you can too. They don't have special genetic gifts. All that, like I'm telling you, this is what it comes down to. And I mentioned this in a previous video, the 12 mindsets like around how the rich think differently. The biggest determinant of your success is how badly you want what you want. It's the burning desire because the burning desire helps move you through the valley of despair. If you don't want it badly enough, then you will just say, man, I'll just, you know, whatever. And that's what it all comes down to, right? It's hard, but it's worth it. But you have to really, really want what it is you want. Okay. So I wanted to share that with you today because I see this as one of the biggest reasons a lot of entrepreneurs do not succeed in business. And those who do simply want it the most. And that desire fuels them through the downs, especially in their business journey. If you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe. Make sure you don't miss any other videos we have coming your way on a weekly basis to help you grow your business and help you help more people. Five money beliefs that could be hurting you. That's what I wanna share with you in today's video. And I'm gonna show you how to think through this stuff so that you can move through the resistance, move through the challenges, and ultimately help more people make more money and win back a lot more of your life.